This podcast is sponsored by valleygivesback.org. What will you be remembered for? Name a Valley nonprofit in your estate plan and create a legacy that tells future generations what matter to you. Making a gift that costs nothing during your lifetime is easy and revocable if things change. With a planned gift, you have the power to impact the Valley forever without affecting your current lifestyle. Your action inspires others to make a difference in their own way. Remember the Valley. Ask your accountant, financial planner, or attorney about planned giving options. Plan now. Give later. Impact tomorrow. Learn more at valleygivesback.org. For hundreds of years, we brought you the news. For the info, we gave you the clues. Owners' profits were always sky high. Changing market now threatens our lives. Post literation, critical reading, dumb down nation, signs of inbreeding, TV sucking ideas from our head. Hey, everybody, welcome to Naval Gazing, the Valley Indies weekly podcast. My name is Eugene Driscoll. I'm a reporter with ValleyIndy.org. Reporter Ethan Fry is in the room, but mm-hmm. off mic. <laughs> That's because we have we have fancy guests today, Ethan, that you're not allowed to interact with. So stay over there on your side of the room. Uh, I'm joined by Sharon Clotius of the Valley Community Foundation. Welcome back, Sharon. Thank you. It's great to be here. And Sharon has brought along a friend. It is Sue Moriello, and she is a tax manager at Apicella Testa and Company in Shelton. Sue, welcome to the podcast. Thank you very much. This, this is, is fun. Then this is your first time doing a podcast of any kind. Of any kind. Awesome. Thank you so much uh, for coming down to Ansonia. Thanks for having me. Also off mic, I'll acknowledge him because he is in the room, is the always reliable, the very friendly and affable John Reddy of the Valley Community Foundation. Thanks, Eugene. <laughs> I, li- I love those off mic sounds. <laughs> that that'll sound good. So we're here t- today to talk about Valley Gives Back. This is an initiative that was started a while ago. Uh, if you listen to this podcast, you hear the website mentioned because uh, it's a sponsor of this podcast. And and thank you for that, uh, Valley Gives Back and Valley Community Foundation. But. We did this once before, and we're here to revisit the topic again, Sharon. So I'm going to ask you right off the bat, what is Valley Gives Back? The Valley Gives Back is an initiative of the Community Foundation to promote the idea of planned giving and to help our nonprofits be able to promote that messaging because it's really important for our uh citizens, people who love the Valley, to understand that it's not only uh, easy, but preferable in a way to be able to give back, you know, through their estate plan or through their assets later on in life when they no longer need them. How's we, that nice way to say that? I, I, I love it. But here, <laughs> I, I, I'll say out front, I, I, you know, I'm an ignoramus. We all know that. I, I'm okay with it. Uh, what is planned giving? Like, uh, I just, my, my finances yeah, are such no, that I live paycheck. Giving, I don't know. What, yeah, no, planned what, what giving is, is very, it's simple. It's that you've made a plan. So when, when somebody is doing their, um, where they want to give, at the, you know, their assets at the end of their life. They might say, I want to give to my grandchildren. I want to give this to my niece and nephew. I want to give this to my children. You just add in there, I want to give this to a charity. And so that's what planned giving is. It's, it's making the plan to give a charitable gift sometime in your life. And it may be at the end of your life. Most of the time, that's when we see them. But I'm sure people are aware that you've got your churches and other types of institutions, especially colleges and universities, that might be doing a large capital campaign, and they really want to see a gift that maybe they can ask you for to go over five years. That's a planned gift because it's usually something that comes from your assets instead of your income. And I assume the reason this is important uh, when I interact with the public and we talk about nonprofits, let's say during the Great Give, the yes. the annual uh, 36 hour uh, giving event, online giving event, uh, I'm not sure if people understand that uh, 
you know, you can make a, a direct impact on a nonprofit or a charity by giving. The money's got to come from somewhere. I don't know Correct. if people realize that. And this is a way basically to help get money to nonprofits who do a ton of good work in the Valley where there are a ton of nonprofits. Is that yes. So? Yes. And, and it's, not only um, important I guess my for question and all give, that yeah. was, it, it, I'm sorry. Yeah. Why is it important to do this? Why, why, why do you have this initiative? Because our nonprofits really are very lean, and our nonprofits do not have the ability to also have a planned giving officer. I'll give you an example. Over at Fairfield University, I don't know exactly how many planned giving people they have there, but I think they have close to 75 or 100 people in their development staff that are sending out literature every day to all their alumni, trying to get them to give either current or to leave in your estate plan or something. Our nonprofits can't compete against that type of volume. But together as a community, we can. Together as a community, we have the billboards up about planned giving, the Valley Gives Back, we're doing postcards, we're doing different mailings, and we're hoping that the nonprofits are going to also complement that initiative by doing their own uh, use of literature to go out to their constituents and their, their donors. And this started in 2017. 2017. And thank you for acknowledging John Reddy because he's been the mastermind behind all our communications, which has been fantastic. Oh, that, no, that's, that's my pleasure. Uh, <laughs> What's been going on in the last year uh, with the Valley Gives Back? Well, the first year was really to set up and get people kind of hearing about the Valley Gives Back and talking about the initiative and hoping that our nonprofits will help spread that word as well as our professional advisors. That's why I asked Sue to come today with us um, so that our nonprofits and our professional advisors who are interfacing with the public would be able to say, you know, have you seen that with the Valley Gives Back? You know, would you consider making a charitable contribution in your planning, in your either estate plan or somehow or other? Our Valley is an incredibly generous, generous community. Mm. And with time, talent, and treasure. Uh, and we have right now probably the generation that has grown up here in the valley, that's lived in the valley. The next generation, some of those guys are leaving mm -hmm. and moving out of the valley. And we don't necessarily have that large population of people who love the valley and want to see the valley retain that community, that, that sense of togetherness that the valley is all about. And that's why this initiative is so important at this time to really talk to those, that generation, or the two, three generations that have been here for a long time. And you uh, must be a professional podcaster because that's a perfect segue <laughs> uh, to Sue, who you've just pretty much uh, introduced. But uh, I have like some technical questions sure. for you. Uh, that I need to be educated on. Okay. But first, let me just ask you, how did you get involved, as I smack my microphone, how did you get involved with the Valley Community Foundation and then this particular initiative specifically? Wow. There's a lot of different avenues I've gotten into the Valley Community Foundation. I've I've sit on and have sat on many or a handful of nonprofit boards in the Valley throughout my entire career in the last 20, 25 years. Um my brother has also been the former right, chairman and Correct, of the yeah. Valley Community Foundation at one point. So I was on nonprofit boards before the Valley Community Foundation existed. So you're a Valley person? You I am from, a Valley, Valley born from? and raised Shelton. Okay. Um, so I've always been a Valley person. My parents were heavily Valley people. The Valley Community Foundation is an, a terrific tool to help small nonprofits in the Valley. I found that they're very generous. They have a great... Uh, great insight into what the small nonprofits need and and they're very reactive and and helpful um so oh, i've had just a long history on and off i'm on the professional advisors um a valley community foundation now and 
I don't and know. what it's about, just a great endeavor in terms of you mentioned uh, small nonprofits specifically what are some of the chief uh, obstacles or challenges that a small nonprofit uh, faces I mean I guess finances would be uh... finances <laughs> is probably the biggest one um, you know just regular day-to-day operations you know people will contribute to a cause you know if you if something dramatic happens and and there's uh, a, a specific reason uh, a nonprofit needs money, um, something breaks, something needs fixing. But day-to-day operations, just staff costs, just keeping the lights on, those are operational things people don't always think about. So we're trying to fundraise. And touching on what Sharon said, it's absolutely true. You have a small nonprofit with a, a, a tiny budget. We can't afford to have hire somebody to make calls and try to raise money so it falls to you know the board and and the supporters that are just long supporters of the nonprofit, and and everybody you know tries to do the best they can but mm. um and then specifically sharon you had mentioned that uh the scenario i guess uh, the, as it plays out is if i'm uh, one of your clients mm-hmm. like i'm eugene and i come in and i want to do my estate planning from all the millions i've amassed <laughs> being a hyper local uh journalist you would give me options. Uh, here's a way. Like, how does that work? How do you bring up the Valley Gives Back in a consultation, let's say? If well, that's generally, how it if you came in to see me to do a tax return, or even if this is something you were thinking about in recent times, um, we would we would start with, you know, what is your overall goal? What what do you want? Um, we wouldn't necessarily always lead with charity. We want to make sure you're providing for your family that you're you have, you know, what you have. You have all your ducks in a row. Um, and then we will approach if you have extra money and your children are well taken care of, we will approach that. Um, I think, though, in, in talking about this, I also don't think you need millions and millions to do this. I, I was going to say, really I'm promoting a stereotype right absolutely. there. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and I think there's a lot of a big push on look at the tax money you can save. But not everybody is in, especially in the Valley. I mean, there are wealthy people, but there's also just regular blue collar people. Um you know, we all just live paycheck to paycheck or have a, a, a smaller savings, for instance. And But you could still give back to your valley, um, your IRAs, your 401ks, a small savings account. You can very easily just earmark a small portion of the money that you may have at the end of your life toward a charity or toward the Valley Community Foundation uh, and entrust them to. And then uh, in exchanging emails with the off mic, uh, John Reddy, he <laughs> provided me uh, some research material. Uh, and he had, there, there's something he mentions here. Uh, retirement account beneficiary designations. Uh, how do they work as a planned gift? What is that? Because I don't even know what I'm asking right there. What's a, what's a retirement account beneficiary designation and how does that play into this? Okay, so a lot of us have either an IRA, a 401k through our employment, a 403b if you're a government worker. Um, and we have savings and we don't touch that retirement money until we're 59 and a half or older on an IRA. You're not required to take it out. People still do, but you're not required to take it out until you're 70 and a half. Well, if you pass away and you still, still money left in that account, it goes somewhere. And when you set up that account initially and throughout your life, you can change the beneficiary designations. If you never put a beneficiary on your account, it automatically defaults and goes to your estate. And then it has to go through the probate process. Your executor has to, you know, it's subject to tax. It's subject to um, other things. And it it will pass the way your will designates. It could be spread among your children, wherever. However, if you have a beneficiary designation and you say, I want it to go to my two kids, then it goes to your two kids directly. You can at that point also add in, can you give, you know, a small percentage to a charity. You could do a fixed amount. You could do a percentage. You can give the whole account to a charity. The difference with um, the benefit of doing this is an IRA, 401k, 403b account has not yet been taxed by the government. So when it passes to a charity, the government doesn't get a piece of that. However, if it passes to your kid or your estate, the government gets the first piece. And it depends on your income tax rate at that point. It could be 40% overall federal and state taxes upwards to from there um it really depends so it's tax saving as well as designating however your money does not leave your pocket until after you pass away so if you need your money during your life 
you get to use it if there's nothing left in the account. That's okay. And is this stuff that's covered in a will? Are we just talking about a will or is this in, is this like independent? Of yeah, it? this is separate from a will. Okay. Uh, a will governs what's in your estate. Um, and a will, if you have a beneficiary designation on account, say, say you have a, a checking account with your spouse and I pass away. My spouse has control over that money and it's his. It doesn't go through my estate. I have a beneficiary, uh, you know, a joint a house owned jointly with my child. It goes to my child. Same thing with the IRA, 401k. If I have a beneficiary designated, it goes automatically to that person. It doesn't have to go through a process and an administrative process. A will will govern whatever's left over that ha doesn't have a beneficiary designation on it. And just in your experience, a uh, day-to-day being a tax manager, are you seeing more and more people in the Valley wanting to set up uh, initiatives like this or to, to, to do planned giving? Is it something that's coming becoming more common? Because I think at this point, we all read that the government isn't funding nonprofits Correct. like they used to. Correct. So I assume that's out there in the general population. But have people made the transition to realizing, oh, I might have a responsibility or an option to do something like this to help out uh, nonprofits and charities? Some, but I think this is why we're here to get the word out because I don't think they're fully, in, but, you know, people need to be fully informed. And if this is a great avenue to, to inform as many people as we can that the option's out there, please call one of us to just talk further. It may be something for you. And then, uh, Sharon, in terms of the last year, how do you feel uh, the Valley Community Foundation and, and all the varying groups have done uh, in promoting this? Do you feel like uh, people are, because this is a tough thing it's a to get out thing. there. I mean, it's, Correct. you know, especially in this day and age where, you know, we're all sort of concentrating. I don't even want to get into any of that. I don't know what I was just going to say. <laughs> but uh, what are the challenges? Uh, like, And, and where, where can people go to sort of, dip their toe uh, into this water to find out more info. Well, you know, that's that's one thing that's very interesting is the um, Valley Gives Back website. It's just simply the valleygivesback.org website. And it allows people to go out there on their own and start exploring different possibilities. We're talking about today the designated beneficiary, you know, that the ability to just change and have a beneficiary in your um, IRA and checking account or savings account, that sort of thing. But when you go out to the valleygivesback.org, you see a lot of different possibilities of how you might be able to do this, whether it's through a will, or if you already have a will, how to do a codicil. Mm -hmm. um, if you are at a certain age and maybe you want income for the rest of your life, and you really are interested in doing a CRT, which is a charitable remainder trust, before you ask Eugene, <laughs> or a charitable Sharon's gift annuity. Like <laughs> You're like or, Imus or something. Yes, You're like exactly. There we go. So, um, or charitable gift annuity. Those are kind of gifts that some of our local charities really don't know how to do and would need to turn to somebody else. And that's where the community foundation comes in because we can do those for our local charities and we'll do it. Um, also, when it comes to real estate, how real estate gifts work or how... We have many small business owners in the Valley, and some of those may want to be, you know, selling their business. Well, before you even try and sell that business, you may want to give, especially if you're a charitably minded individual, to say, I'm going to give 2% of my business to this organization or to the Valley Community Foundation for this purpose. And um, then when you sell the business, that portion of it is charitable and does not get taxed, does not have that realized gain that's going to be attached to any of that sale. So it gives you a lot of different options in the privacy of your home to look and not think somebody is watching over what you're talking about and doing. And that's why it's important for us to make sure our professional advisors are informed about it so that they can go out and be able to explore as well. And then when somebody comes in, they're prepared for it. So like this most recent campaign of the designated beneficiaries, John has billboards all over the valley, and it's of this little boy with his hands in front of his, his eyes. I like that one. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. attention-grabbing. It is very yeah. attention-grabbing. Yeah. And we wanted to make sure our professional advisors knew that that was out there so that they knew, be prepared. Hopefully, you'll have people coming in to say, okay, how does that work? How would I do this? 
And, you know, that's our, our hope is that that's what they do. And then, uh, like, turning to the other side of this conversation, I know when we had uh, talked previously about valleygivesback.org, part of the initiative was also getting uh, the small nonprofits on board to sort of uh, take a crash course uh, in, 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 in planned giving. How is that going? I know you had a series of workshops. So yes. I remember, mm-hmm. like, didn't weather con- uh, <laughs> delay one or hurricane yes, or two? Yes, that's right. When we had... we the had Florida hurricane. Yeah, the Florida hurricane stopped our speaker from coming in. But we did. We did have a very dynamic speaker that came in and worked with the nonprofits. We also had another individual come in from plangiving.com who is our vendor for our website that John works with. And he also came in to do a communications and marketing uh, seminar with our local nonprofits of how you can use the Valley Gives Back website, but also develop your own type of marketing campaigns. So we have, again, just like Sue was saying, our nonprofits are very small, and mm. it's very diff- small in administrative help and mm-hmm. being able to do development. So um, we've had three or four nonprofits that have been able to really start going down this road, but it's not easy. It's not right. easy to find that time, and we just really want to keep encouraging them. Uh, can are there have been any success stories yet? Like, what, can you talk about one of the nonprofits that started down that path, or is that for them to to talk about? That or? is for them to talk about. But I do know we have uh, two nonprofits that have established a legacy society, in which they've had two, you know, their own donors that can step forward to say, "I want to be part of your legacy society," which I do think is is definitely a win. That's for wonderful. That. You know, one of the things with plan giving is most of the people doing their planning are really in their 60s, 70s, mm-hmm. and, you know, they're young for plan giving. So, you know, you never know them for 10, 15, 20 years sometimes. Uh, and then talking uh, in general about nonprofits and what the Valley Community Foundation uh, does in the Valley, uh, is there anything coming up, any events? I know the Great Give is looming. That's always right there. Is there <laughs> anything else always, you wanted to touch upon? That's always looming in the, uh, in the spring of the year. Um, right now we have a lot of different types of events for some of our council members. So the board advisory council that Sue was talking about and our professional advisor council we'll be making sure that they're informed of what we're doing. So it's more on our own um, personal pieces, but we have a lot going on. And at some point in time, I'll probably come back in and say, hey, can I talk to you about mission-related investments? How's that one? I like, like that. Yeah, mission yeah, related. That sounds, that sounds. Is that that sounds like something out of like well, it's one of the things, a Charles Bronson movie. I <laughs> know it's one of the things that the Community Foundation is is going to be doing that instead. Not instead of. In addition to doing our grant making that we've done, we will also be looking at opportunities to do types of investments into either for profits or non profits of. Uh, Uh, organizations and plans that will expand our mission in the valley so let's say somebody has a an idea and a business they want to set up that will actually bring in 40 50 new jobs into the valley it's something we want to hear about see if we can either do a short-term loan or some sort of investment so it's different than grant making it's oh, that's fascinating. Making. Yeah, you're definitely mm. going to have to come back yeah. uh, for that. Because there are a lot of, I don't know if companies is the right word, but we're seeing, I'm thinking specifically Ansonia and Derby, sure. where there are jobs being created to, yes. to some extent, uh, which is good to see. Cause we launched in 2009, and mm-hmm. the economy was definitely at a low point when we come in, came in, but we've seen some uh, some growth. Since, I mean, on Main Street here in Ansonia, you walk down the uh, the street at night, and it's much different it than much. it was right. 10 years ago when we launched. You also... Uh, have you're on social media we're pretty much a social media organization there uh, you're on facebook there's the hashtag valley gives back yes. you can visit valleygivesback.org uh, search twitter for that hashtag valley gives back you can call the office at 203 the valley community foundation office that is at 203-751-9162 
Is there anything that, Sharon, you want to add about this initiative that perhaps I haven't asked or haven't touched upon? Uh, and same thing with uh, you, Sue, if there's anything else either of you want to add to this discussion. Just one thing I, I think I missed or glossed over quickly is uh, this retirement account beneficiary designation, which is why we're here today. It's much easier to undertake changing your beneficiary designation and adding a charity to it than it is to rewrite a will. Now, I'm not saying don't go to an attorney. Attorneys are very important in this process also, but just wanted to let you know that it's very easy to undertake some of these changes. And what's your, con- is there a website or anything or your contact information that you wanted to uh, throw out there since you're, you're on here and people might have follow-up <laughs> my, questions for you, my invite firm. you on to other podcasts, <laughs> I don't know. My firm's website is uh, ctcpa.com, connecticutcpa.com. I work at Apicella Testa and Company in Shelton, public oh. accounting firm. Great. Thank you That's so much great. for coming Thank on, you. Sue and Sharon. I'll let you have the last word, unless John wants to yell something off mic. <laughs> well, I would say along with... Um, so one of the things that was very interesting for us to learn about the ease of doing the designated beneficiary, uh, we had a client or donor that, you know, did join our Gates Society by naming an organization uh, through the Community Foundation. What's it, the Gates Society? The, you... Oh, I'm sorry. The That's Gates okay. Society is our legacy society. Okay. Um, and she had changed her... Um, will to indicate because she had everything listed in her will and that instead of her brother receiving the IRA, that she was going to leave half of the IRA to the community foundation to benefit this certain organization and the other half to her brother. So she went into her financial planner and he had seen the, you know, the announcement on our newsletter that she had joined our Gates Society. And he said, oh, how did you do that? Because he's seen her will. And he's just like, she said, well, I changed, I changed it in my will. And she sa- he said, yeah, but you never changed it in your beneficiary form. And your beneficiary form. Correct. Trumps, trumps a will. A will. Right. So, so no, a, matter, right. no matter what she said in her will, by not changing it on her beneficiary form, it didn't. Matter. It didn't matter. Correct. It would have still gotten a hundred percent to her brother. Right. So that was that was news to me. That you know what trumps what when it comes to all you financial people. Right. <laughs> and and that is so important that people do talk to their advisors about different things. You know, even Absolutely. if even if when she changed her will, if she would have called this financial planner, who was in charge of her investments, and said, "Oh." by the way, I saw my attorney and I did this, this, and this, they would have said to her, no, you need to come in or you need to go online and change your beneficiary designation. Because mm-hmm. that's how easy it is, like you're it's saying. A, correct. It's just It's the going same online. thing with a, with a joint bank account, um, anything like that. If there's a designation on an account already, it's it comes before the will. The will governs what's left over. Gotcha. And you know, also there's a lot of people in this area that probably have whole life insurance mm-hmm. or universal life insurance that have a payout value or a cash value. And sometimes they say, you know, my kids don't need it anymore. You know, they're, they're grown, they're successful. You know, I don't need to um, worry. I don't need to worry about their livelihood. Right. And they can care more about, you know, the elderly or the, the children or the immigrants or so many different things. Our schools, our schools. <laughs> so who need the financial help? You're saying, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. you know, and uh, they need that that financial help. And if your kids are grown and successful and everything else, not to say give everything to charity, but to really give it a consideration. There's a bunch of ways to ho- to help. There's a yeah. lot of different options out there, and then the uh, type of organization you can benefit is also yeah. Almost Anything. infinite. So, right. All right. I want to thank you both again for coming on here. You're all welcome to come back anytime. Thank you so much. You do uh, for the Valley and beyond. And to learn more information, go to www.valleygivesback.org. This is Eugene Driscoll. See you next time. Mm-hmm.